So today I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, what's going on recently. So I attended the Echo Fair last uh, weekend and uh, also connected with the UFD trash team as well as uh, Stop Plastic uh, organization. Uh, there are a lot of non-profit organizations and a lot of volunteers and uh, um, especially in the Echo Fair um, activity, the event they actually discussed a lot of uh, important issues and questions, problems related with plastics or eco-friendly, eco-friendly um, actions. So I'm very glad that my gardening body, Sharon, shared me with these kind of uh, people who are volunteers inside of this big association. And um, I also shared a lot of my opinions and uh, um, opinions, especially in the plastic plastic free world. Um, so first of all, um, since um, I'm initiating this project called the Voice of Eco Friendly Action, so the main purpose is to spread the news about our opinions on. Um, some plastic issue i mean especially those pollution issues not limited to waste uh, land waste but also to uh, air pollution and uh, water pollution but here i would like to only focus on plastic so i'm going to talk about uh, what's going on recently uh, with the with with the with the push from the landmark worldwide the self expression and leadership program so i initiate this project called voice of eco friendly for action and what i'm doing is trying to connect with people in toronto as well as in my chinese alumni association uh, so right now um i already um connected with a lot of people who are activists and volunteers in this domain as what i as that, as i said and I proposed uh, several uh, ideas. First of all, I connected with some people, not connected, when I went to um, um, have dinner or have some snacks in the Chinese restaurant, I talked with the managers. Um, so I asked them if, um, if, is there any kind of way that we can reduce the plastic, um, a single use uh, plastic um, takeaway wares? Like those uh, black containers or plastic containers and plastic bags, and they and he he showed me the cost between the papers and bags, especially in the Chinese uh, suppliers. I mean the I think it's called uh, uh, Red Drive Red Drive uh, suppliers, and he mentioned that it is cheaper when they purchase plastic, even though it can be deducted as a cost in the restaurant. Uh, when they when they do the, the tax report every year, but uh, for them the income still re reduced if they buy uh, higher and uh, I mean more expensive supplies. Uh, so for takeaway for takeout food, so that's why they chose plastic. I said, is there any way that we can change the situation? For example, one of my Chinese alumni association uh, told me that uh, if it's if it's bothering us so much, we could use the economic way to change the situation. For example, if you, if the restaurant uh, is not going to provide plastic uh, containers, instead we provide very expensive glasswares to take away or, or very good material or silicone, whatever. Even it's paper, it's good quality one, or it's like metal, metal material but it will it will it will be good that people because they don't want to spend too much money on takeaway containers so they may just limit themselves using those plastics but at the same time uh, the manager the restaurant manager told me that it's impossible because if only their restaurant is thinking about this is doing this and all the restaurants not doing then they are not competitive because people will think oh it's too complicated eating in a restaurant then we just go to other restaurant to have dinner we are not going to eat eat here because it, it's it takes us too much money to spend on the recyclable uh, containers for takeout and so I think he's reasonable so somehow I said is it possible there's other ways 
And he said because in Canada there is in Toronto in Ontario like not here every other province like Quebec Quebec province they do have incentive from the government if if the government could um think about some kind of incentive program if the restaurant if the small restaurant like them can uh can choose uh recyclable uh, can choose eco friendly uh single use not single use eco-friendly um, supplies not plastic bags instead of maybe paper or or paper bag or paper container or silicone one or metal one the the government will give some incentive like the because now right now if you buy electronic cars in uh, in canada you got incentives from the government that's a one way that restaurants will consider about will give them the motivation to really change the situation so I'm really glad that they, they, they are giving me good ideas for changing the situation. So maybe that's why I talked with the Ecofair volunteers. I said, is it possible we can consider their consideration? I mean, those uh, restaurant managers consideration because they mentioned that uh, like big company, big corporation, like uh, for example, Pizza Store, Famoso is not very big, even though they have 20 restaurants, maybe around the east of uh, East side, uh, Canada East side. That's the uh, Ontario and Quebec. I don't know whether Quebec they have it, but Famoso definitely is a bigger one because they have their maybe supply chain for supply chain for their paper. They produce their own papers and boxes for the takeaway stuff, takeaway supplies, and uh, but for small restaurants, small business like those Chinese restaurants or Asian restaurants, Korean restaurants, Japanese restaurants, they don't have it. So they have to buy the supply from the supply. They have to buy the plastic bag and pl plastic container, black color or white color from those supplies, which increase the cost. That's the, one of the reasons because if like McDonald's, Tim Horton, KFC or Famoso, this kind of middle middle level or big level cooperation, they actually have their line, they have their production line to produce those papers and then will make all the cost to eat, uh, cheaper. Uh, that's their idea. That's their uh, opinions. So why they the cost for them is more expensive. So they hope that people can think about that too because we eventually would like to think about the win-win situation so that it's benefiting, the policy need to benefiting the small business because they are really helping the economy. They produce a lot, they produce jobs, they produce good quality food and uh, they are really hardworking people in the city. At the same time, we want they that because there are some kind of incentive program, so they could they could thinking about shooting more eco friendly um, um, I mean containers or takeaway bags, so that uh, we we are also doing something good to the environment. So that's one thing that I'm doing. That's why I propose that we can we can consider about that. So, so this is also the message I would also deliver to UFD trash team because I talked with the Vanessa from the Ecofair event and another girl. Um, but um, but. Uh, but uh, since they uh, proposed to me to sour their manager, so I'm here like uh reproducing these messages and to let you guys know what i talked about especially for the policy part and second of all is uh, i'm thinking about it because in toronto there's an, uh, a, a, a company which i think is from united states it's called sarah recycle so i'm gonna go give you grab some kind of uh, uh plastic bags because i really like a product so um, I really like the farm boy thing. It's not only for farm boys, so don't specifically because there's, there's a lot of snacks and food and that I know that people use plastic, especially you go to the supermarket, you can see this kind of can, this kind of package, actually it's uh, plastic, but there's no sign. Some of the, some of the packages they will sign, this is PP or it's, uh, it's what material, what kind of plastic use, actually it's recyclable. But most of the situation, because there's no sign here, so we are not going to recycle into in the bla uh, blue bin, so we are going to throw it at home in the black bin. But TerraCycle, this company, they are thinking about um, recycle this kind of bags from home, or even the makeup, the toothpaste, 
the container of the makeup, the, 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 the toothpaste uh, package, they are all made of plastic. If we can recycle these brands, that would be great because before we throw out in the garbage bin and then we could directly recycle it. But I'm not sure whether that it's the consumer's uh, responsibility to pay money for other people to come to the home to collect that part, to collect these garbage, these plastic. So maybe there is a better way to do it. If we have a lot of volunteers, we definitely can can set up an app like the case. They actually ask you to spend $3 a month and then they can come to your places to, to collect those uh, plastic containers, black, uh, black, uh, black black plastic containers because in Toronto uh, as far as I know the black containers are recyclable you cannot put inside of the blue bin you put it in the black bin but it's actually recyclable so in Fergus there's a company they can recycle it and uh, uh, before the sweet potato supermarket in Toronto actually is collecting it but recently because of COVID-19 they stopped doing it so recently I asked my neighbors they told me that there is a company called Case C-A-S-E they only have Instagram so I didn't find website so you need to check the Instagram also you need to check um, an app called C-A-S-E Case so you have to specifically say that it's about plastic recycling so you may find it. So I will show it here also what does the case look like and I will show the website here. So you have all the information, the uh, Instagram website page, so you know what does it look like. And also show that uh, I have a video about uh, where I find it and I have experience. I went there and then finding the restaurants. There are several restaurants in Toronto. You can recycle the bl um, uh, black containers. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, you will see the video here too. Um, so that's that's one thing that I really care about because if we could like thinking about, so we have two parts here. So right now every day we are throwing this kind of plastic to the to the black bin. So before we throw it out, is it possible someone, some kind of organization, nonprofit organization, can take care of this directly? Say, hey, don't throw out these. These are good plastics. Before you throw out, we can just recollect it because I know that's a little bit dirty inside their foods, but before you throw out, actually it's clean because it's clean foods. And second of all, if you already throw out in the black uh, black bean, is there any way that like, because ocean cl clean up already collect a lot of plastic material from the ocean, the garbages, and they actually um, recreate the products like glasses from sunglasses from the uh, plastic they collected so it is possible any kind of uh, any kind of plastic material packages in our daily life we could make it into uh, raw materials that's why we say there's no real garbage in this world and that all of the garbages actually are resources for example if it's compostable we can use it and we can make it into uh, fertilizer right and uh, um, what else? Let me think about. There's a lot of kind of. Uh, if we can recycle every kind, like bottles of foam, and also the the construction uh, used out. And last week I was uh, so the third one. So last week I was thinking about recycling my dishwasher at home, and because um, there's only one thing is not working. It's only the touching board and also maybe the control board. So uh, I. Uh, so the repair guy came and checked all the electricity part and which part there's no electricity means there's no signal and it's broken. So if there's only a small problem and but the wires and everything metal inside is good and outside the plastic is also good. So if you don't throw out in the outside, people won't come to recycle and people take it as our garbage. But actually, if you put it outside, people will take it. Why? Because some people know that they are resources. There's... Um, there, there, there is a. Uh, th those wires actually have some kind of a, you know, um, it's very special metals actually can change into it's it's a it's it's very rare metals so it's, they are very precious, and they are not garbage. So if you can collect and recollect and then gather it, and Toronto they have a lot of plastic uh, recycling company and also metal recycling company. So people only take care of the guard. If you put it outside of the yard, uh, of the yard, you people will take it. So it means that it's not garbage, right? But people are not going to do it if you want some kind of cash. But actually, it's resources for our everyday life. But we do.
definitely can think about it, uh, like uh, shifting our mindset to think about what is really garbage. There's no garbage in the world. So if we can think it well, so the two parts of the being so all those garbages that gar uh, those the plastic bags we didn't throw out and the plastic bags we already throw out in the government. So in the government recycling project or non-recycling landfill project. Well, if, if if you can think about it, those the, those garbages they collect, there's a lot of resources there. Is there any people that is doing that kind of work? Because most of people will think that they are de they are degrading and they are bad. But think about it. Ocean Cleanup, the nonprofit project, is doing so well in the world. Why other people we cannot think about other other countries in the world, other organization, nonprofit organization, or plastic related organization. We cannot think about it, making it really treasure. And that's my message today. And I hope you enjoy and see you next time.